Hello everyone, I am Siddhant Hazare, a student of Bombay Teachers Training College. Today we will learn science through some fun demonstrations. The first one is called the wet handkerchief. For this we will need a glass and a handkerchief and also we will need a mug of water or any tub or anything else filled with water. Now for the first step you have to make sure to put the uh, put the handkerchief inside the glass. Make sure that it is fit at the bottom of the glass and does not fall. And then you're ready for the next step. Let's go. All right. So here we have a glass which is filled with the handkerchief and you can take a mug or take a bigger, bigger vessel. That's fine. Now let's do it over here so that we can clearly see. Now what I'll do is put this glass with the handkerchief into the tub. What do you think will happen to the handkerchief? It will get wet. Let's see. I've submerged the glass entirely. Now let's remove the handkerchief. As you can see, it's not wet. Isn't that magical? Let's try with a clear glass. All right. So now I have a glass here and I've filled it or stuffed it with the socks. You can do it with anything, not just a handkerchief. All right, let's try that again. So make sure this doesn't fall on its own. And now I put the glass in. You can see that the glass is entirely inside along with the socks. And let's take it out again. As you can see, the socks is still dry. Just slightly wet because of my hand, but that's it. How does that happen? What do you think? So why does that happen? Why does the handkerchief or the socks not get wet? So when I put the glass inside with the handkerchief, these two are not the only things that go inside the water. The air is also present inside the glass, right? The air is everywhere around us rather. So there's air over here, which also goes into the water when I put the glass just like this, right? And now when the water tries to come, go inside the glass, it is met with the air also and then the socks, which was inside it, right? And now, why, why, and the, the, the air stops the water from getting to the socks because air is also gas, it is matter, it occupies space. So water is not able to push that air after a certain time and reach the socks so it does not get wet. That's what happens. So as I said, there when, when I put the glass just like this, there's also air that all goes inside it, right? There's air, the glass is filled with air right now. Now when I put this glass in water, there is air also goes in, right? And you can remove this air. Just tilt the glass. You see those bubbles? That was the air from the glass escaping. Now, as you can see, the glass is entirely wet and there's water inside it. So if there was a socks or a handkerchief inside it right now, it would have been wet. There's something else to learn here. Let's see that again. So when I put it like this, so now there's air in the glass, right? See what happens when I leave the glass. See, it popped up. It came up to the surface of the water. Now let's try that again after removing the air. So I've removed the air, flip the glass and it stays down right there. See? So what do we learn from that? As you could see, when there was air inside the glass, it came up, it tried to come up to the surface of the water. This is very vital when you're swimming. So when there is air inside your lungs, even if you go deep down, your body will try to float and come up to the top of the water. However, if you remove air from your lungs entirely, then you will go inside the water. That is, you will drown. You can try this in a swimming pool as well. Take a deep breath of air 
and go inside the water and just don't do anything just curl up your legs you will automatically come up and float however exhale out all the air and then go inside the water this time you will not come up to the water please do this under supervision so the next experiment is a water spray and this for this water spray we'll just need a straw or rather two pieces of straw so this straw is something that i got from the back of a fruity there was a milkshake so next time you have one you could even try out this science demonstration with this straw all right so this is very simple just see what i do okay so i have one piece and this is a glass of water for our water spray and then what i'll do is pull this in this so that it is inside the water and now watch this spray could you see that so that was a simple water spray which works on a very well known and a very simple but an amazing principle do you know of this principle have you heard of this so the name of the principle is the bernoulli principle let's talk about that more the bernoulli principle is a principle given by the swiss mathematician and physicist daniel bernoulli this principle has profound and deep meaning and has seen a lot of usage in physics and other sciences to put it simply what this principle says that let's take this piece of cardboard for example it simply states that suppose there is air going from above and below the cardboard now if the velocity of the air going from above the cardboard or anywhere changes there will be a change in the pressure in that area as well let me tell you again so suppose the velocity of the air above this piece of cardboard changes okay so this velocity or velocity of air below the cardboard is different and above the cardboard is different let's say it's more what will happen is that there will be a change in the pressure above the atmosphere above the cardboard then that of the pressure below before when the velocity of both the air was equal the pressure was also equal now what will happen when the pressure changes so if bernoulli's principle states that if the velocity increases in a particular region of the air then the pressure in that region will reduce and if the velocity is low in a particular region the pressure will be high the inverse it's the velocity and pressure are inversely related velocity increases pressure decreases velocity decreases pressure increases so what what effect does it have so if there is high pressure over here and low pressure over here the air over here will try to push the cardboard piece of cardboard to go to a region which has lower pressure because air always goes or always travels from a region of high pressure to low pressure this is what determines the currents of, of winds and this is not only restricted to air this is also applicable to fluids in general bernoulli's principle with the help of bernoulli's principle you can also determine why at the center of a cyclone or a typhoon or a tornado let's say the air pressure is very low because of that because the air is traveling very fast in circular region inside a tornado let's say because of that the pressure is very low and since the pressure is very low at this point let's say this is the th this is the tornado every air around it everything around it has high pressure so the wind around everywhere around also tries to go inside to the area of low pressure so when i blow air over the top of the opening of the straw over here like that what happens is that the velocity of air around this opening is very high and because of that because the velocity increases the pressure here decreases and fluids always flow from a region of high pressure to low pressure so this part of the uh, straw which was inside the water is at 
a higher pressure and this side is at a lower pressure so air from this straw will come up and away outside the uh, this end of the straw and along with it it will also take the water as the air moves out and that's how you get the water spray the next experiment is called thread on fire children are advised to do this under parental supervision for this you need three things a coin some thread it is just or any thread made of cotton or any other material is also fine and a matchstick or a lighter or a candle now what we will try to see is can we make this thread immune to fire can we make it catch on fire or can we prevent that from happening so obviously as you can guess if i try to light this if i hold a matchstick near this thread it will likely burn but can i stop that somehow let's see now let's see what happens when i get a matchstick close to the thread as you can see it burns quickly and it literally just crimped of sorts now let us try to strengthen this weak thread by tying it to a coin now i have tied a coin to the thread i have secured it such that the coin can hang along with the thread now let's try to see what matchstick can do to this thread as you can see i even touched the coin with the thread i rather i touched the matchstick and the thread but it hasn't burned let's try that again let's see if that's the case if i keep doing it more and more it's still holding up what if i do this <laughs> as you can see the thread above the coin is still weak but the thread which was tied to the coin it has blackened a bit now yes but it's still not burnt or broken so yeah we strengthened the thread but how did we do that so what we saw there was that the when the when the thread was in contact with the th uh, coin and when i tried to heat it through the matchstick it did not burn immediately what does that ha why does that happen that is basically what we call as conduction of heat so heat that was i was passing to the thread was actually also being absorbed by the coin which was in contact with the thread so the heat was getting transferred from the thread to the coin and the coin heats up much slower than that than a thread that's why the thread was also heating up slower because of that it did not burn immediately but that was not the case when i took the took the took the flame above which above the on the thread which was not in contact with the flame or uh, i am sorry with the coin and it immediately broke off so here we learn that heat can transfer through solid objects through contact the in this case it was the contact of the thread and the coin however in the very beginning we could see that even if i had not brought the flame in contact with the thread it was still burning off and it would still feel the heat heat so heat can also transfer uh, heat can also transfer through air so basically these two are mediums through which heat can transfer but what do you think does heat require a medium for it, its energy to be transferred for for it to be transferred is there anything in your daily life that you feel every day or you see every day where 
let's say that heat is being transferred without any medium or rather through a vacuum well i feel that every day what about you